This is the second part of Ennio's near-death experience, which unlike the majority of NDEs, ended up in a dark place. Watch also the first part of this account to understand the whole story. Let's get to the narrative. It was getting dark, and at night the fear intensified. It was terrifying, an experience that haunts me daily. I know some people may not believe it, and honestly, I don't care whether they believe it or not. The truth is, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. What I went through was terrible. Descending that slope, there were many people. I needed to maneuver around them to avoid stepping on them. Sometimes they tried to call me, asking for help, but I just wanted to get out of there. I was very scared. Then at a certain point, I spotted something about 40 or 50 meters away, a towering figure. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was enormous. When I saw it, I froze in fear, motionless, and it sensed my presence coming towards me. This made me even more terrified, paralyzed like a statue. It approached, sniffing me intensely. I felt its breath, a rotten odor that made me even more frightened. In a moment of pure terror, I thought I might faint. It was gigantic, larger than me, and had a somewhat human shape, but it was like a cloud, something ethereal. I could see through it. It was a frightening presence. It was prowling around the people on the ground. I don't know if it was harming them, but when it was nearby, they fell silent. Perhaps they were scared, just like me, petrified with fear as it investigated me. After that terrifying encounter, it moved away and I felt immense relief. I knelt down, cried, and prayed, trying to regain some peace. That experience left me on the brink of madness, feeling like I was losing my mind. Finally, I relaxed a bit, trying to regain mental control after five intense days. That interaction with that strange being left me profoundly shaken, but eventually I gathered the strength to continue my journey in search of help. I kept walking, fleeing from there, descending a slope, and came across a huge structure, something like a gigantic wall stretching out for a distance I couldn't see the end of. There was an entrance, more like a barricade, and when I entered, I found myself facing a descent leading to a cave with a mysterious light, as if there was a torch lit inside. As I approached the entrance of the cave, I heard a voice warning me not to proceed. It was a male voice, but I didn't recognize whose it was. Surprised, I backed off and decided not to go further, trusting that warning. I returned the same way and continued my journey until I found a sort of city, although abandoned, with old houses and empty streets. There was no one there except for those mutilated people on the ground. The strange being was there too, but this time it didn't seem to notice my presence. After that disturbing encounter, I continued to move away from the city, eventually reaching a beach with dark sea and dark sand, with a strong smell of mud. There was no one on the beach, just the nauseating odor that made me leave, and I withdrew again and started crying, and suddenly, I woke up in a hospital. There in that hospital after all that, it felt like the best thing in the world to me. I leaned slightly and saw some nurses, some people talking, and I was very thirsty. I tried to call out, Miss, miss, I need water. But she didn't hear me, didn't look at me. I tried to sit up a bit more, but I looked around and saw that I was covered in tubas in the bed. It was a shock to release myself in that way. Then I looked at the wall and it started to crack and I went back to that horrible place again. At that moment, my mind started to get confused. It felt like I was going crazy didn't know what was real anymore. I was very tired, not physically, but my mind couldn't take it anymore. There were moments when I would crouch down in an attempt to return to the hospital again, or at least calm my mind a little. And at one point, I managed to wake up in the hospital again. But another day had passed. I was in a coma for a total of five days, and the sense of time felt the same. Before my first return to the hospital, it had been three or four days, and when I returned to that sober place, it was another one or two days. In my understanding, I think I was dying. I was very sick, I got pneumonia in the hospital, which put me in an even more critical condition. In my perception, I think my body was dying in that hospital, not me, understand? Before, I didn't believe in life after death. I always believed in God, but for me, when we died, we would just vanish forever. But now I'm convinced that we continue to live even after death. 
We do not die in any way. In my experience, I didn't see God or beings of light. If someone asks me if I believe in God, I say yes, but I really didn't see anything celestial during my experience. But I can say for sure that we have a spirit, and it doesn't die. Life simply doesn't end. Of this I am as sure as the sun will rise tomorrow. Another thing that changed in me is that I ended up becoming a better person, a better father, a better husband, and a better person for myself. I never harmed anyone to the point of hurting them, but I didn't do some good things for myself. I used steroids. I was a jiu-jitsu and MMA instructor, but today I see life completely differently than before. And I lived in the middle of fights, took a lot of steroids to keep myself big, and I wasn't a good husband either. And I think that contributed to me ending up in that place. After all, most NDEs people go to a good place, and I didn't understand why I went to that place. I think this was a second chance for me. I'm not saying I turned into an angel, but this experience, despite being negative and terrifying, made me a better person. I still have a lot of fear of going back to that place and remember it almost every night. I know it's hard to believe, and I don't want to convince people otherwise of what they believe, but I'm sure my experience was real, and if I can help someone in any way, I'll be happy. I don't wish that place on my worst enemy. Well, that's Ennio's near-death experience. The original interview was filmed in Portuguese and the link is in the video description. Don't be sad to have heard this experience if you've lost someone close. I believe that Ennio just had a warning that there are places where we need to pass to repent, but we will never stay in the darkness forever. I hope you've gained something from this story. Thank you, and until the next video.